One of the questions we often get asked from customers is, how can they build applications that process thousands of events from Stripe to be more robust against changes and irregularities in traffic? Well, one solution that I strongly recommend is to consider building parts of the system on top of a serverless architecture. This way, developers could focus more on the business value and a lot less on the actual infrastructure. Now, this also gives them the ability to build out the integrations that process all of these events from Stripe, but also rely on the fact that the system will automatically scale up or down to handle any irregularities in traffic. So now, if this sounds interesting, well, why don't you stick around for the rest of this video, and I'll show you how you can build out a serverless solution that processes events from Stripe built on top of Microsoft Azure. Before we take a look at the implementation, it's a good idea to understand what exactly we're building first. This diagram shows a simplified version of some of the components that are involved in the process. As events are triggered in a Stripe account, they'll get forwarded over to a serverless function being hosted in Azure. Now the job of this function is to receive those events, validate that they actually came from Stripe, and then queue them up inside of Azure Service Bus. Then we have another serverless function, the checkout processor. This will just be sitting around and observing the queue, waiting for new work items to get queued up. Whenever new checkout messages are available, it'll pull them out of the queue and start processing those orders. Now let's switch over to our editor and take a look at the code. Over in the IDE, you'll notice that there are two serverless functions defined. The first one gets triggered whenever HTTP requests come in. This will happen as events occur inside of the Stripe account and the requests are sent over into Azure. The second function gets triggered whenever messages are sent into that Azure Service Bus queue. Let's take a look at the implementation of the first function. What's happening here between line 25 and 28 is that the event is being constructed and validated using the Stripe.NET SDK. Then further down around line 32, we're listening for the checkout session completed event. And if the payment status is set to paid, we'll return a response that'll queue up the message inside of Azure Service Bus, as well as return an HTTP 200 back to Stripe. If we take a look at that events hook response, you can see that this is just a custom type. The message property is labeled with a custom output binding. So it lets Azure Functions know what queue and connection to use whenever it's sending the message. The second property, which is of type IActionResult, is used to send an HTTP response back to the caller. In this case, it'll be Stripe. So they'll know that the webhook event was successfully received and we're working on it. Let's close this. And what I want to do is start a debugging session. I want to be able to run these serverless functions locally first before we deploy them to the cloud, just so I can validate that they're working the way that we expect them to. I'll open up the terminal here inside of the IDE, and I'm going to use the Stripe CLI that I have installed. And what I'm going to do is issue a Stripe listen command. And what this will do is forward any events that get triggered inside of Stripe to our local machine. In another terminal session, I'll do a Stripe trigger command. Now, what this will do is synthesize a fake event, essentially and it'll run it locally here. So you can see our breakpoint got hit. This is inside of our webhook receiving function. And this is the second function that is listening to that service bus queue and pulling messages out as they get queued up. Now it looks like everything is running and doing what we expected to locally. Let's stop this debugging session and then head over to Azure to take a look at what the infrastructure looks like over there. Inside the Azure dashboard, I've already set up the infrastructure for this application inside of a resource group. If I select the Functions app instance, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that those two functions that we talked about are already deployed. What we need to do here is go to our HTTP function. I need to click this button that says Get Function URL. I'm going to copy one of these values and use them inside of Stripe. Now, if I head over to our Stripe dashboard, I'm going to go into my Integration Sandbox. Inside of here, I'll go to the Developers menu and click on Event Destinations. Now, this is the place that we want to go to when we want to set up where we want to forward events to, I'll select Create New Destination. I can filter out the events that I want to use. So in this case, I just want to use the Checkout Completed event. Continue. Webhook Endpoints. And now I'm going to paste in that URL we copied from Azure. You can add an optional description if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that. Now, the next thing we need to do is to copy this Webhook Signing Secret. So I'll reveal that. Copy the secret. Now, back in the Azure dashboard, what I need to do is go back to my function app. I'll go down to environment variables. And now I need to add my webhook secret here. So I'll click add Stripe webhook secret. 
I'll paste in the value and I hit apply. Hit apply again to make sure all those changes get taken. And now that webhook secret is available inside of my function app. So as it needs to validate events as requests come in, it will be able to use that webhook signing secret. Now let's head back to Stripe and let's send a test event. Notice the instructions direct us to use the same Stripe CLI command that we saw earlier. If I head back to my IDE, I'll open up the terminal and I'll issue that Stripe trigger command. This time, these test events should be sent to the endpoint that we set up inside of Azure. If I come back to the Stripe dashboard and I refresh this page, there you see our events have been successfully delivered to that serverless endpoint. And just in case you're worrying, remember, all these events have been firing inside of a sandbox. So that means that nothing has been affecting my production account and we've been entirely working within a safe space. After you're done building and testing the serverless integration, you can exit the sandbox and apply those settings to production. Regardless if you work for a brick and mortar store or an online retailer, it can be challenging to know how much compute capacity you'll need to process orders and run backend workflows. Building parts of your Stripe integration on top of a serverless architecture could give you the flexibility and the scalability you need to make sure your business keeps running smoothly. Now, if you want to learn more about how to work with Stripe events, how to work with event destinations, definitely make sure you check out our Stripe documentation and also take a look at some of the resources we have available in the description below.